Yeah. So morning we have a discussion regarding the classification of polymers and uh, also certain uh, uh, terms which are used in uh, polymers that is just like a molecular weight and uh, uh, poly disparity. Everything we discuss in today's class. In today's class, we are going to discuss uh, the most important thing: the polymers used in additive manufacture. So there are a uh, number of uh, polymers which can be used in additive manufacturing. So as I already been discussed, the different uh, additive manufacturing techniques uh, in the form of uh, serial lithography or uh, selective laser sintering or uh, laminated object manufacturing or uh, um, as 3D printing and like that there are some kind of fusion deposition modeling. So different different techniques will have uh, their own uh, materials and uh, uh, can be used around the 350 materials they have come. But out of these uh, materials uh, we will be discussing only three. It is uh, One is a polyamide, <coughs> another one is a phenol formaldehyde and the third one is a polyester. So of course so there are plenty out there, but uh, our syllabus uh, has given only these three: polyamide, poly polyphenol, formaldehyde, and uh, polyester. We are going to discuss uh, these three uh, polymers, which is used in anti manufacturing with their uh, uh, chemical structure and uh, what are their applications and their end uses, what we can call it as. And uh, finally, we have to discuss what are their advantages and disadvantages. <clears throat> so in that, the first one is polyamide. So polyamide, or uh, we call it as a nylon six, which basically consists of uh, the amide group in their uh, chemical structure. And uh, this polyamide is a solid material, and uh, having uh, the powder has attractive feature of being self-supporting for generated product production. This makes support structures redundant. Polyamide allows the production of fully functional prototype and end use parts with the high chemical, mechanical, and uh, thermal resistance. Polyamide parts have excellent long term stability and are resistant against uh, most chemicals. Since this polyamide is uh, one of the most important material used in energy manufacturing, and especially the powder, the powder of polyamide has got attractive feature and it can be, it acts as a self supporting for a generated product production. When you are discussing uh, the fusion deposition modeling or uh, uh, selective laser sintering, <coughs> so where we don't require any kind of uh, uh, what we call it as uh, the support structures, so especially in selective laser sintering. And uh, this allows, means polyamide will make uh, the production fully functional prototypes and induce parts. In the sense, the polyamide material can be used for making the functional prototypes. As well as nowadays, it can be used for end use parts also, means uh, the end products with the high mechanical and uh, thermal resistance. These are the two important uh, the properties that uh, polyamide will have. One is the high mechanical and mechanical strength, resistance, sorry, and thermal resistance. And also, these polyamides uh, will have excellent long term stability and are resistance against uh, most chemicals. So, chemical, it is the chemical. Uh, chemical resistance is more for different uh, chemicals, and that of course uh, it has a long term stability and retain its state for a longer time. And uh, they are used for, of course, so this is one important thing the polyamide material used by materialize is certified by as biocompatible and food safe under certain conditions. In the sense, <clears throat> The polyamide material, what they use is uh, materialized zone company certified as uh, biocompatible and uh, the food that is safe under certain conditions. This is one important thing uh, for our regarding polyamide. So this uh, polyamide makes a wide range of products and is similar to many manufacturers, familiar to the many manufacturers. Polyamide is flexible and this enables uh, many more parts to be made with it. In a sense, what it says, you can make uh, a number of uh, products, wide range of products, from uh, smaller to the larger size the products can be made. 
And of course, this type of uh, material, it is polyamide, is very familiar to everyone. And uh, it is more flexible, and hence, and it can be more, uh, which makes them, which makes that material to be uh, used for making many parts. So, some of the examples that I have listed out here is uh, in just lacquered pots and uh, houses are uh, good fit for the material. Glass filled, aluminium filled, and carbon filled grays extend the scope of the material. So you can see the polyamide structure over there. This structure contains uh, uh, the amide group, COMH, is an amide group. This plate is a macromolecule, and uh, amide group forms the backbone for uh, the polymers. So I think you can uh, just see that structure on the slide there, so where uh, polyamide is consisting of COMH group, which we call it as a, uh, amide group. This is the one important uh, concept of uh, polyamide. Coming to the application parts, <coughs> applications of polyamides. So it will have a wide range of applications. It can be having applications as a fiber, as a plastic, or an adhesive. And uh, when it comes for uh, fiber application, 50% uh, into your tire parts, nylon six and nylon six one six. It can be used as a rope or a thread or a carbides and uh, filter cloths. And it can be used as a monofilaments, brushes, force equipment, and the brittle nylon from a tank. And coming to the plastic applications, uh, it can be used uh, in the manufacture of bearings, gears, and cams. You can make uh, polyamide bearings and gears also. Rollers, slides, door latches. Red guides, clothing, light tents, shower curtains, umbrellas, electrical wire jackets, like that. There are so many applications. Use polyamides in the form of a plastic, you can manufacture uh, <coughs> many things. And as an uh, adhesive application, it has a uh, hot melt or a solution type. You can use thermoset reacting with epoxy or phenolic resins, and flexible adhesives for. Uh, Red wrappers, dry suit packets, wood points. Yes. So, polyamide uh, has its applications in different different forms, either in the form of a fiber or in the form of a plastic or in the form of an adhesive. So, this is uh, the polyamide applications. And coming to the advantages and disadvantages of polyamide, let us start with the advantage. Uh, polyamides are very tough. Strong and uh, impact resistant. It will have a uh, low coefficient of friction and uh, it is uh, very resistant to the pressure. It has got a very high resistance to the high temperature. So it can be used in the uh, high temperature or hot conditions. Of course. And uh, processable by thermo plastic methods, good to solvent resistant, resistance to the base. So these are all uh, what we say as uh, some of the advantages of uh, polyamide. When it comes to the disadvantages, it has uh, high moisture absorption with the dimensional stability, subject to attack by strong acids and oxidizing agents, require UV stabilization, high shrinkage in molded sections, electrical and mechanical properties influenced by moisture content and dissolved by so this is what uh, we call it as the <coughs> disadvantages of uh, polyamide. So this is regarding uh, the polyamide material, which uh, we use it in our uh, uh, additive manufacture. So important thing you should remember is uh, the structure of a polyamide, the applications, and the third important thing is advantages and disadvantages of polyamide. So in the examination, they may ask any of these things, and they may ask you to write a short note also sometimes. Write a short note on uh, uh, polyamides. So you can add all these things point and you can uh, just explain this for maybe around uh, five months or six months to be there for the exam. Then the second type of uh, polymers we use it in our additive manufacturing is uh, phenol formaldehyde resins. 
So these resins are uh, synthetic polymers. Synthetic in the sense they are uh, man-made polymers. And these are obtained by reaction of phenol or uh, substituted phenol with formaldehyde. Uh, it is used as a basis for metalite. So this metalite is one of uh, the synthesized uh, polymer. They have been widely used for production of molded pots, including the billiard balls, laboratory pots, and as a coatings and other stuff. So this is regarding the uh, what is how phenol formaldehyde is formed and their uh, basic applications. So phenol formaldehyde are condensation polymers. So in the morning we discussed uh, uh, addition to polymers and condensation polymers. So this type of polymers where uh, the monomers combine together uh, with uh, uh, we call it as exclusion of uh, some small molecules such as water or alcohol or uh, ammonia. And uh, they are combined, they are condensed. <coughs> they are obtained by condensing phenol with formaldehyde in the presence of acidic or alkaline techniques. So, in the sense, so phenol formaldehydes are condensation polymers. So, and then they have obtained by uh, Condensing phenol with formaldehyde in the presence of acidic or alkaline techniques. And they have got, uh, they have been prepared and they're called as a becalite because uh, of the name American chemist who prepared it as a becalite. The name becalite, uh, he's the one who just uh, prepared it and hence uh, the, they have got the name as a becalite. Phenol formaldehyde residents are also called as becalites. <coughs> It comes from the properties. Phenol formaldehyde resins having low degree of polymerization are very soft. They possess excellent adhesive properties and are usually used as a bonding medium for laminated wooden planks and in varnishes and lacquers. Phenol formaldehyde resins having high degree of polymerization are hard, rigid. Back resistant and infusible. They are resistant to non oxidizing agents, salts, many organic uh, solvents. They can withstand very high temperatures. They act as excellent electrical insulators. So, this is uh, basically uh, the general properties of uh, phenol uh, formaldehyde. And uh, phenol formaldehyde in its resin form has its uh, uh, low degree of polymerizations are very soft material. And moreover, they have very excellent adhesive properties, and hence uh, it is used uh, as a key, bonding key. Uh, when you look at uh, the laminated wooden sheet, wooden planks, just like uh, and uh, varnishes also. And uh, resins having high degree of polymerization, it's a thinner formaldehyde uh, resins are of two. Two ways you can obtain one is with uh, low degree of polymerization, another one is with a uh, high degree of polymerization. With the low degree, it will have to be soft, with the high degree, it will be very hard and rigid, and it is a very fast resistant and infusible. And this high degree polymerization, uh, inner formaldehyde resins, they are resistant to, uh, to non oxidizing acids, soils, and many organic uh, polymers. And uh, this type of uh, polymers, they can stand very high temperatures and also they act as a excellent electrical insulator source. So These are some of the properties and you can uh, just uh, explain the properties with the uh, uh, phenol formaldehyde resin with uh, low polymerization, low degree of polymerization and with uh, high degree of polymerization. Next comes the uses. They are used for making uh, molded articles such as uh, radio and uh, TV pots, hooms, fountain pen ba barrels, phonograph records. They are used for making decorative laminates, wall coverings. They are used for making electrical tools such as switches, plugs, etc. They are also used for impregnating fabrics, wood, and paper. They are used for bonding glue for laminated wooden planks and in varnishes and lacquers. Sulfonated phenol formaldehyde resins are used as an ionic stress resin. 
ionic stone deposits. So when you look at these uh, uses, basically this uh, phenol formaldehyde resins, they are uh, apart from uh, using it as a glue laminated they can also be used they can be molded you can have this easily molded uh, material it is you can mold it into a uh, pots or article such as uh, radio and tv pots spoons fountain pen barrels and uh, phonograph records etc and more and more uh, uh, they are very good for making uh, electrical goods such as switches and plugs. What we generally use it in our household and the lens, plugs and switches. And uh, they are used for impregnating fabric wood and paper. And of course, it has a bonding glue. And of course, uh, it also used as an uh, uh, ion exchange resins in the case of uh, uh, sulfonated uh, phenol form. These are all some of the uses of uh, phenol formaldehyde Moving to the third one, what we call it as a polyester. Polyester uh, is a polymer which contains an ester group, ester functional group in their main chain. So whereas polyamide has an amide group, here polyester has an ester group. It means they will form uh, the backbone for uh, their functional their chemical structure. And uh, the polyester is currently defined as long chain polymers, chemically composed of at least 85% by weight of an ester and a dihydric alcohol and uh, erythalic acid. It means the polyesters are long chain polymers. And it contains minimum 85% of weight of an ester, ester group, and a dihydric alcohol and a terephthalic acid. Means it is a combination of ester, dihydric alcohol, and terephthalic acid. So all these things together, so you are going to get uh, a polyester. The name polyester refers to the linkage of several monomers within the fiber. Although there are many polyesters, the term polyester is a specific material most commonly refers the polyethylene teric palette. That's in short, we call it as a PET. So I think uh, <clears throat> we might have uh, seen the different articles when we go for. Uh, the shops, uh, Sri Ram Pet, uh, Sri Pet, like that, they might have given the name the Pet. Uh, originally, it is a chemical component. It is a polyester. So, it is a polyethylene uh, erythalic. So, that is what it is been made with, uh, it's made with uh, the polymers. Yeah, so you can see the structure of uh, the polyester over there. It contains uh, ester groups and uh, it has. Uh, Alcoholic and terephthalic acid groups is a the structure of uh, a polyester. Next comes <coughs> chemical properties of polyester. Of course, uh, uh, the chemical properties have been listed under different headings, just like uh, effect of moisture, effect of leaches, effects of acids effects of alkaline, effects of organic solvents, variability, effects of some like. So this is a generally uh, general pro chemical properties, you can say, uh, chemical properties it is. And when it's a for effect of moisture, polyesters absorbs only a very small amount of moisture and the tenacity and the elongation are unaffected by the moisture. Means polyesters are not hygroscopic. They don't absorb the water or the moisture content. And uh, their elongation is not affected by the moisture. Means it's totally, it is uh, not affected by the moisture content. 
Second one is not affected by oxidizing and reducing leaches. Polyester fibers and effects of acids, polyester fibers are highly resistant to mineral and organic acids. Weak acid cannot affect on them even on oil. Strong mineral acids such as H2SO4 can only hydrolyze back on boiling for hours of sugar. In the sense, totally these polyesters are highly resistant to the acid. So you've got uh, the weak acid, even in, on boiling also, the weak acid does not have uh, any effect over the polyester. And even uh, if you look at the strongest mineral acid, just like H2SO4, and on boiling, it can hydrolyze that. And that too has to be uh, boiled for hours together. So, means what you can uh, finally conclude is polyesters are uh, not affected by the acids. And the next one is effect of alkali. Polyester is very much resistant to alkali. Only strong hot alkalis results in slow thinning of the diameter by saponification. So again, it is uh, not affected by the alkalis, means it will have high resistance to the alkalis. Only with the very strong hot alkalis, so it can uh, uh, slow thin. Means it will get, uh, their uh, thickness will get reduced by saponification. And the next one is effect of organic solvents, resistance to a dry, dry cleaning solvents, dyeability, dispersed dye, and uh, some pigments can be used for coloration, effect of sunlight, has a good resistance to sunlight but becomes weak when exposed in sunlight for a long time. So these are all some of the chemical properties of polyester. Next comes <clears throat> the end uses of the polyester. Of course, uh, it has got uh, so many applications, uses as an apparel, as a blended fabric, uh, as a foam for machines, and uh, in industrial use. So, there are plenty of provide a uh, range of applications the polyester has. So we are instead of only most important thing, just like an as apparel, as a blended fabric, as foam formation, and as industrial. Just typically, just look at that uh, end uses. As an apparel, polyesters are used in uh, making men's wear, women's wear, children's wear, trousers, shirts, shoes, jackets. Blouses and every form of clothing are made by polyester. You can see this polyester is clothing. Besides ties, cylinders, etc., can also be made by polyester. So, majority of uh, apparel industries they will have uh, you know, they use this polyester as their main material. And these polyesters can also be blended with the other materials. As blended fabrics, the polyesters are widely used in blends with cotton wool, acrylic, nylon, or fibers for making quality fabrics. Blended with the cotton and virgin wool are very popular. They are often referred to as a classical blend. This is not only combination of 55% polyester and 40 percent I think that when you go for uh, purchasing a new cloth in the shop, I think you can see that uh, polyester blended, cotton blended with the polyester, uh, whatever it may be. So, uh, polyester uh, is one of the most uh, important uh, blending material in the fabrics. So what they say, the cotton with the virgin wool, blends with the cotton and virgin wool are very popular and they are called, uh, referred as a classical blend. 
very rare you will find 20, 50% in polyester and 40%. So this is the application of polyesters in blended fabrics. And third uh, end use is as a foam furnishings. Was uh, what we see in our uh, houses, carpets, curtains, wrappings, sheets, pillow covers, wall coverings, upholstery, etc., are all made up of uh, polyester fibers. And as an industrial use, polyester fibers are used in manufacturing of tarpaulin, power belt, ropes, tarpaulin, nets, houses, conveyor belt, etc. It is also used in making floppy disks, liners, etc. Use of polyester higher than any other synthetic fiber. The use of polyester is higher than any other synthetic fiber due to low cost, no durable, no fading, easy care, no iron. Yeah, so this is a, an industrial use. Uh, when you look at that, uh, we will uh, use it uh, for uh, different purposes over here. Industrial use and it can also be for making floppy disk liners, use of polyester, rare things, and other synthetic fibers. And polyesters are the most uh, higher uh, used synthetic fiber. Uh, the main reasons for that is. Low cost, more durable, no fading, easy care, and no iron. So this is uh, regarding the uses of uh, polyesters. Okay, so these are the three important uh, materials that we use it in our uh, additive manufacture. So please remember structure, applications, and their properties, and their advantages and disadvantages are very important. So you may get a uh, question based on. Uh, uh, the sharp moves, the sharp moves is on any of these uh, materials. So just add all these things and you can uh, uh, write down. Maybe one for uh, six months or eight months, sometimes you may give a sharp okay. So this is regarding the different uh, <coughs> uh, polymers that we use it in our additive manufacturing. The next part is we will go to discuss. Uh, the processing of polymers. So there are uh, different concepts, different techniques, different uh, uh, methods are there for us to discuss uh, the polymers. Okay. So complete the problem is uh, I got only around eight minutes time. So I will just uh, I don't want to start uh, different methods here. Instead of that, I will go for uh, biopolymers today, and I will discuss that biopolymers. And in tomorrow's class. Uh, uh, we will start with the uh, processing of uh, polymers so that I can complete it. Yeah. yeah. I was talking about uh, biopolymers. So, what is biopolymers? The polymers that is uh, developed from living beings and are biodegradable. Biodegradable chemical compound that is regarded as most organic compound in the atmosphere. And these biopolymers are present on Earth for billions of years and is older than plastic. So biopolymers, biopolymers, these are the polymers which are developed from living beings, either from a man or from an animal. And these are regarded as the most organic compound in the ecosphere. And these are existing, they are present on the earth billions of years. And the most oldest polymer we consider is a plastic. And it is older than the plastic. Just imagine uh, how long, how billions of years ago this uh, polymer is in existence. <clears throat> Some of the examples for biopolymer here proteins, uh, carbohydrates, DNA, RNA, lipids, nucleic acids, peptides, polysaccharides such as glycogen, starch, and cellulose. So, I think uh, these things are uh, very familiar for you either proteins or carbohydrates, DNA, DNA in the human being, uh, 
figures what causes for genetic disease. And uh, most important, uh, biopolymer in a human being, DNA and RNAs, and uh, cellulose, which is uh, most important in the animals. So the, um, the biopolymer which is uh, existing abundantly on the earth is the cellulose, which can get it from uh, the animals. So these are some of the examples of uh, biopolymers. See, these biopolymers are classified into four categories. One is a sugar-based biopolymers, salt-based biopolymers, synthetic material-based biopolymers, and a cellulose-based biopolymers. So we will discuss one by one now. Sugar-based biopolymers are starch or sucrose. It is used as an input for manufacturing polyhydroxyburate. Sugar-based polymers can be produced by blowing, injection, vacuum forming, and extrusion. Lactic acid polymers are created from milk sugar, that is lactose, that is extracted from potatoes, maize, wheat, and sugar wheat. Polyacrylates are resistant to water and can be manufactured by methods like vacuum forming and blow and injection. So starch and sucrose, the rules are polyhydroxy butyrate. And uh, sugar based polymers are produced by blowing the uh, injection by different methods. Uh, lactic acid and milk sugar are extracted from the potatoes, maize, and wheat. All acids resistance to water. Then the second type is starch based biopolymers. Act as a natural polymer and can be obtained from wheat, topico, topiaco, <coughs> topiaca, maize, and potatoes. The material is stored in tissues of plant as one-way carbohydrates. It is composed of glucose and can be obtained by melting starch. This polymer is not present in animal tissue. It can be found in vegetables like uh, tapioca, or wheat and potatoes. So this is a starch-based biopolymers. Next comes Biopolymers based on synthetic materials, compounds that are obtained from petroleum can also be used for making biodegradable such as uh, aliphatic aromatic copolymer uh, polyesters and manufactured from synthetic components. They are completely compostable and biodegradable. So these are all the ones which are manufactured from petroleum products. Cellulose based biopolymers, these are used for packing cigarettes, CDS, and uh, confectionery. This polymer is composed of glucose and is primarily constituent of plant, cellular, and water. It is obtained from natural resources like cotton, wood, wheat, and corn. The production of biopolymer may be done either from animal products or agricultural products. So this is uh, the cellulose-based biopolymers. Next comes the uses of biopolymers. So biopolymers may play a essential role in nature. They are extremely useful in performing functions like storage of energy, preservation, and transportation. Sugar-based polymers such as polyacrylates naturally degenerate in the human body without producing any harmful side effects. This is the reason why they are used for medical purposes. Polyacrylates are commonly used as surgical implants. Starch-based biopolymers can be used for creating conventional plastic type cooling and injection molding. Biopolymers based on uh, synthetic are used to manufacture substrate mats. Cellulose-based biopolymers such as cellphone, cellophane, cellophane are used as making mat packing material, packaging material. These chemical compounds can be used to make thin wrapping films, food trays, and uh, pellets for sending fragile goods and shipping. So this is regarding the biopolymers. So I will stop at this point. So any clarifications we can make here. Tomorrow we are going to continue with a different uh, um, techniques of processing techniques.